Hi, Martin. Hey, how's it going? It's been I never a while. asked you, are you okay with the 80s retro arcade vibe that I've thrown onto the show? Yeah, I know you like that. Well, I mean, I'm old. <laughs> We all live it like like the music we listen to in high school is the music is the soundtrack of our life. Someone said, and I'm like, that's kind of that's scary accurate. It is. No, it's good. It's good. And like um, featured. Yeah, uh, comes me next. This uh, oh. next this coming week, I'm flying out Monday. This and, Monday. Uh, yeah, next yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'll have to. So, I'll have to know. Unfortunately, yep, Jimmy Vaughn and I are presenting. Um, kind of what's new in teams rooms teams rooms whatever and it's uh we're gonna do the, the jeopardy game and there's like a bunch of questions we're gonna do double jeopardy if you want double jeopardy i just found out uh we're gonna give away jobber devices and at least poly plantronics hp poly devices for the double jeopardy questions oh nice I see. Yep. so everybody gets a prize it could be um i don't have them with me i brought back uh, as i do bags of chips from the philippines so some lucky people will get some V cut potato chips and some other things and uh, stickers and whatever. So, you know, if you get the, if the low end question, 200, you know, the 200 point question, like what does MTR stand for? You get a sticker, which is cool. There'll be some cool, unique stickers there as well. I'm looking for a couple I need to give like empowering that cloud. So, you know, you get some empowering cloud stickers and collab con uh -huh. from Sharon Weaver's collab con. So, yep, there you go. Not Pat Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, are you, you're not going to be there, are you? No, no, unfortunately not. No. Yes, that comes versus Taco Bus, Taco Truck. Yeah, they're actually still on my desk. Mine are somewhere. All right. Um, anything? Have you done anything exciting lately? <clears throat> um, no, maybe not exciting. Um, no, I was supposed to be running a marathon last Sunday, but I'm injured. I got shin splint. Oh no, that hurts. That, I didn't do Manchester. I just watched some friends do it. Um, well, at least you're supporting. Yeah, I, uh, I London I, this week. L L London Sunday, so more friends doing that as well. You're not running that one either. No, no, no. I'm trying to recover. Um, That's why. How about you? Because you've been traveling everywhere. Yeah, I uh, I just finished like an 18 day road trip. So in 18 days from Florida to Auckland, New Zealand, to Sydney, Australia, to Bangalore, India, or Bengaluru, to Manila, the Philippines, and back. Wow. So like I said, on my last trip, uh, I probably spent more time in, my feet were in the air more than they were on the ground. <laughs> what was that trip for? So Jabra, Asia Pacific is running these Jabra team summit or tech summits. And so we did, each one had pretty much the same thing. One hour on co-pilot and intelligent speaker. So I you start off with like, hey, this is the P50. Then I did like 35 minutes of pure co-pilot. We didn't even talk about hardware. And then wrapped it up with how does intelligent speaker work? And then the coolest part was a live demo. So we'd have two people in a conference room and me on stage. And I would share my team's client. So you could see the transcript going up the side and attributing everyone's names. And then finish that off with some co-pilot questions. You know, the meeting was done. Let me ask co-pilot some questions. Oh, let's look at the intelligent meeting recap. So those were all live demos. So those that's what we did. And then the second half was mostly an introduction to MDEP, Microsoft Device Ecosystem Platform. Yeah, awesome. Is the Jabra Panicast 50, is that is that already an intelligent speaker? Yes. It, uh, it, it, it the, the firmware was released in December of last year. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah, you have one, don't you? No. No? No. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk. Uh, let's talk co-pilot or something. How do we share? I haven't done this in so long. Present. Oh, wow. Share screen. Entire screen. There we go. Yeah, we'll figure out something about that P50. Anyway, co-pilot. Co-pilot. Yeah. So this is. Um, Real quick, so think... before, we, before we jump into this, if people didn't know, Martin creates these slides every month at aka.ms slash what's new copilot. So you can download yeah. these, especially if you're a partner, you can customize the name field, brand these with your company name, whatever you'd like to do. If you do monthly calls or even quarterly with your customers, you can download the last quarters, put them all together into one big presentation and have a good presentation to your customers. So anyway, that's where this information is coming from. Yes, this is the, sec this is the second edition really. So I'm slowly building and going through it. But yeah, I try and get these out 
first week of the month if possible depends how busy and how much content there is but uh yeah so co-pilot microsoft 365 uh, oh, thanks, Michelle. Uh, yeah, available to more organizations. This announcement's been out for a little bit, but um, I think it was a, maybe early ish March. I think as soon as I'd finished the February edition, the day after this came in. <laughs> yeah, when this came out, it, it, when, they, when they dropped the 300 user yeah. requirement, yeah. our so, Jabra demos, our, our demos tenant, we I jumped immediately and bought one. <laughs> like, boom, Copilot 1, done. Um, so, yeah, we I jumped on it immediately. So, yeah, uh, so it's a good thing if you if you didn't know that Microsoft had expanded it beyond 300. Ooh, look at that transition! You even put transitions in. Uh, yeah, I can't. I think that was maybe morph. I don't know, but uh, yeah, ground copilot prompts integration um, into Word, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, so uh, here, so it says, if you're writing a document, you want to remember the day, upcoming deadline. So now you can open Copilot and ask prompts in the apps now as well. So instead of before, this is starting to roll out in April, but uh, yeah, you can just open Copilot in the right pane and ask any question, which you can. Oh, as opposed to having to open Word and yeah, then write back to that one specific question. Yes. Yeah, so it, okay. it, terms of going in just going you know write me a document and then you're like oh i need to ask a question or i want to ask copilot something else then you go over somewhere else do it all within you know have ground copilot prompts integration so so slightly off topic joao just asked does p50 recognize the face profile too in we're in the tap program technology adoption oh. program with microsoft on the facial recognition so it will be coming but no dates for when that is going to happen ah awesome yep you know, yeah, I've been using this. I've been using the mobile app. I used it a bit when I was traveling, and uh, even on an airplane, when you don't want to break out the full laptop to do a little bit of work or look something up, just use the Teams mobile app and ask a query or two. So this one's been pretty good for me. Yeah, and when we, when I've been out at events and things, not many people know about the Copilot mobile app. And um, we had a QR code that you could scan, and they were like, "There's a mobile app." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. Like, how do I get it?" I'm like, Go to the app store, download it, and then you know if they'd already got Microsoft uh, Copilot for Microsoft three sixty five, sign in and use it, and they were like, "Whoa, um, yeah." So I mean, I use it on the mobile all the time. I even used Copilot when there was a couple of us. Uh, we go to the pub um, when the our kids go to gymnastics. We go pub club, um, and we couldn't decide which one, so I just asked Copilot which one, and it actually yeah. I'll flip a coin for you. It was actually pretty good, but. Uh, you can use it for more work purposes as well, of course. Yeah, I first installed it just because. And then, you know, it's like one of those things, oh, I'll install it, play with it twice and never use it. And slowly I've been using it more and more. And the reason I thought I'd never use it is because Edge, uh, still my Microsoft to hangover. I still use <laughs> Edge as my default browser on Android and Bing as my default search. And so Bing right there, it's got the Copilot, right? So I'm like, yes. open the Edge browser and go. But it, it's a faster, not, not that Copilot's faster, it just seems to be a better workflow to use the app than to go to edge and then do a co-pilot search and whatever. So I've started using this more and more. I, it's getting to the point where it's going to get pinned to the homepage. And that is like, that is big time when you're on, on the homepage. Yeah. I, interesting. I think I installed the Bing plugin into Chrome. Um, and now co-pilot icon appears. Oh, nice. Yeah. The Bing plugin. Yeah. I uh, did this for the first time today. Um, Outlook yeah. on the web. Um, it, it wasn't. It was. It was a simple, silly email. Uh, not a silly email. It's a good work email. But it was just. Oh, this button just showed up. So I said, summarize the email thread, and it did. It actually. It, it pulled out the key bit of information as the very first thing. So that was well it's done. Good. It's good for. I like the summarizing of threads particularly a lot. Um, sometimes the other day, sort of. Uh, I start my day, I walk, usually take the kids to walk the dog, come down, and then I've just started getting into the habit of open Copilot and just say, summarize my day. And it was pretty good. And it highlighted a few things people had sent me, what my priority was, and I followed it. Yeah, it was really, really good way to start. So I'm getting in the habit of more using that now. But yeah, so here, this one, direct Copilot access in Outlook. Um, so, By the way, going uh, back to the Copilot app, I just had a... Uh, uh... That remembered something I actually said in the trainings, at least one, at least in one city. Every yeah, I, I have no script, as you know. I freestyle, so I'm probably only said it in one, but copilot search 
within so the thirty dollar Copilot from Microsoft three sixty five has immediately solved the problem I had where it was like, man, I know I saw somewhere that somebody said this. So yes. then you search Outlook, not there. You search Teams, not there. You search, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, was it a what, what? Somebody sends you a file. Did I save it to my OneDrive? Where is it? Just ask Copilot. It searches across all of them, as opposed to having to use Outlook search, mm. Team search, OneDrive search. It just searches across all of them. So just for a search engine of where did somebody say something or where yeah. where does this file exist? Like it could still be an Outlook. You haven't saved it to OneDrive yet. That's why you can't find it there. So using it as a global search is one of its many superpowers. Yeah, this one here is available in new Outlook for Windows. Um, yep. So there are more Copilot features coming to classic Outlook, which are on the roadmap. But want to know Outlook on the web or new Outlook? Are you using new Outlook? Um, I use, yes, in that I use Outlook on the web for work. Okay, yeah. So I'm so all, I, like, I'm on the, yeah, I'm, I'm Outlook web, Teams web. Don't ask why. There's reasons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's reasons. Um, so Excel, this is one, I think Excel, is, I don't use it often. And because of that, when you are manipulating CSV files or something like that, when you use Excel, really use Excel beyond just like making a list or notes, this could be massive because you just ask Excel, hey, can you remove every row that has a blank space in column three? As yeah. opposed to me now searching where where it is and then half the time the search engines tell you, oh, in Outlook 97, you did this. I'm like, why are you still returning Outlook 90 or sorry, Excel 97? you know, search queries, the ribbon bar is completely changed, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this could be massive for, for minor users like this. I'm interested if my niece, I should ask my niece in Mexico city when this comes out, she lives in Excel. It's like her job. It's not her, her job is in Excel, but she, she has amazing skills in Excel. I wonder if this is going to be a lot of use for her for simplifying some of the advanced, advanced, advanced stuff that she does. Yeah. So just on that, the, so it, Copart and Excel is, is in preview still. Um, but here we're bringing in... This was a common question people asked, actually, when I was at quite a lot of the events. You know, can I use my voice? Is there voice commands of Copilot? Uh, and, yeah, that, that's coming here. So use voice commands to prompt Copilot and it eliminates the need for manual typing. Yeah, because we can see the little speaker. Yeah. I think this popped up in the Copilot mobile app. It popped up the... Uh... Yeah. The ability to search by voice on the copilot. It's on the copilot web. Um, yeah, it's in different places at the moment. But here's his Excel. Yeah, and you know what? Um, if you watched uh, selling Microsoft Teams rooms before this, Michelle Bowman does his AI prompt of the week or copilot oh, yeah. prompt of the week, and they're really good, but they're also very long. Go through this, do this. I also want you to create a column that does this. Bold everyone that does that. Add a date column, and yet it's a paragraph. And I, I just like, man, when I create these, I really don't want to type a paragraph and a half, even yeah, though yeah. even though that is like, I'm not knocking Michelle at all. That is the correct way to do it. I think using voice solves that mental hurdle for me. I should start using voice because then it's like, hey, create a table based off this document and highlight this and that and do the others, create a chart where only this happens. I'd be more likely yeah. to do it. I need to start using my voice more. Loop, loop. Uh, you use loop? I do not. I do not use loop. I, I not not that. I, I've I tried to create a loop when there's something maybe Jimmy and Michelle were, and I were working on, or just Ooh. Jimmy and myself, and then cross tenant federation and stuff ended up being problems. So I ended up not looping. So uh, I don't think any of my coworkers are looping either. Not that uh, not that that we're we're right. We're probably wrong. There's probably a time and a place, and we just forget or don't know that time or place. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm a looper. Um, so I am looping more um, planning upcoming boot camp we're doing in loop as well. But um, yeah, Copilot is in loop. Um, so here it's all about, we say, passing information on a page and give you rele more relevant outputs, what you're asking for. Uh, exactly, yeah, summarize the content of the first section or list out the deadlines in a table. Um, so again, you know, helping speeding up things, but... Little touches here and there, but yeah, Copilot in loop as well. And creating the table in our demos that I did in Asia, one of the, the things was uh, create a table of all of the tasks that were assigned to everyone. Um, you know, have a column for the name of the person it was assigned to and another column with the date, the, the, the date it's expected to be completed. 
based off the meeting. That was, that was pretty good. So I just see this here, create, create a table. That's another tables cool feature. It, it, like creating tape, like it, when we're out, like showing people in a Teams meeting, just, you know, using Copilot in Teams, create a table of the list of actions and owners and deadlines. Like, it can create a table. Like, yeah, done. Table's done for you. Yes. There's a little video. Yeah, I you didn't know there was a video. I was looking at the next no. slide in PowerPoint. I'm like, why is it showing the same slide? Because <laughs> there's this video. <laughs> yeah, I should have done it. Um... Yeah, another fun thing that we did in the demos is after the meeting, hey, uh, the, the prompt was, can you summarize this meeting in an email format, adding a yeah. introduction and closing paragraph for something I can send to my boss? So it's like, hey, boss, today we <laughs> met with blah, 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 and these were the king points. Uh, hope this summary helped you and please feel free to reach out and, you know, if, with more qu with questions or whatever it created. It, so basically there's the email. So that's the other thing is after the meeting, you want to email the email out the notes, just have Copilot yeah. write the email then copy. I see you just copy that. It drafts it out in there, copy paste into Outlook. I mean, the future will be probably integrating that more, but uh, yeah, like somebody said, oh, okay. You know, can Copilot draft me a quick email to, just to tell people what they missed and they should watch the recap. I'm like, yeah, let's just write it. We write it out. Like, oh, wow. Even has my name at the end. Like, yeah, yeah. copy and paste. <laughs> Check it. Update it if needed. Away you go. Um, this this slide's a good feature. It yes. There's the there's a whole data estate data management thing that uh, I trust me. I know Copilot has coughed up some files I didn't know I had access to when <laughs> when doing queries. And so if you have that issue or there are SharePoint sites that you absolutely don't want in to Copilot yeah. to use, you can now block them from Copilot from entirely. So so just a, the, the big example of the classified information SharePoint. Yeah, don't let Copilot parse that at all. No, I mean, the, this is the thing where the under the, the underlying security permissions labeling sh you know, should be there. Uh, people should do that. But here is, I mean, we know this is a temporary solution, gives you time to review and audit that. So. I mean, Copilot does honor the existing security and compliance policies that you've got, honors you as a user. Um, but, it, you know, it, it does rely on uh, the, I guess, data estate being in good health. Yeah, but I think this is part of more of that, right? With Commitments, yes. Yeah. So there's new commitments to data management, uh, worldwide multi-tenant customer commitments, advanced data re residency offerings. So there's a link there to click in here, and there's a, there's a picture of the roadmap item. That was the best picture I could pull for this slide. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's new commitments in there. You can access the information as well if, if you need to go and have a look at those. Do you know why this doesn't show up in Teams? Is it because meetings, it's got to be a bot and it's more difficult? And this is these are kind of one to one and it puts the bot in? Uh, intelligent call recaps. This, it, yeah. It, uh, yeah. So it's not, the, the, yeah. Intelligent call recap. This isn't there yet in phone. This is what's coming. But the idea is that this would be the same or this would provide similar functionality to intelligent meeting recap. You can use Copilot. So Copilot in Teams phone, if you have Teams phone, you know, you can use Copilot during a call. You could use it after a call. But this is bringing all that information in a recap, which meeting recaps, the intelligent meeting recaps of Copilot, amazing. I yeah, but, the, so, and, but this it. one here, you don't have to start the transcript. It listens in and does a speech to text on the call. Is that right? So it's automated? You still, I think you still need transcription enabled for this at this time. This isn't okay. available yet. It's coming first half. This is a Teams premium or and or co-pilot for Microsoft 365 feature. Um, but this, if you have a call, um, it will give you that recap straight away. I don't have to open co-pilot. I don't have to go and uh, go and ask questions into copilot similar with an intelligent meeting recap you know you see a meeting view recap it gives you the notes a summary this is the same thing for voip and pstn calls um with transcription enabled but um yeah often the meeting recaps you know i can just consume the meeting recap was i mentioned read the ai notes any actions sometimes i don't even have to go and open copilot and ask those questions the recap is is great yeah, yeah, yeah. Recap on mobile. Yeah, I, I think the the meeting recap is great. I'm I, I'm desperate for that follow option. 
So yeah. I don't know if it's in these slides or the coming. Uh, so yeah. maybe, I'm, maybe I'm jumping ahead, but when we get to that slide, we can kind of skip it. it as best to understand it in the Outlook calendar, when you get a meeting invite, there's, you know, RSVP with join or, or sorry, RSVP, yes, no, tentative, and they're adding follow. So you pull down follow and then Copilot attends the meeting for you and sends you the meeting recap. So if you're double booked, you attend the meeting you want to be in and then Copilot will just send you what you missed on. Yeah, the other I think meeting. it more or less brings you the recap to you rather than you. I haven't I haven't used it, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. This is bringing intelligent, re intelligent meeting recap onto mobiles. Yeah, and that's probably, they, I don't think mobile necessarily does anything. It's just them building the layout and the, yeah, the, yeah. the app portion in the mobile app. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, Copilot will have access to meeting chats as well as the information in the transcript as well. So how often is, you know, in the meeting? I think I think it was in the, one of the Teams Rooms videos, Greg Bowerbolt said, you know, chat can be the meeting within the meeting. Correct. Um, yeah, and now Copilot can go through there because there's another conversation that goes through in chat, which at the moment, you know, is, is missed in a way by Copilot, but... See now this is bringing chat and transcript into Copilot. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people paste URLs and things like that of value yeah, yeah. into the chat, so Copilot can you pick that up. Yes, now. Uh, yeah, or soon. <laughs> I guess now. I don't know. We'll try it. Copilot compose. Yes, yeah, so this is Copilot in Teams. If you're writing a chat, I think this is in. Yeah, it's composing chat and channels. Uh, you can start off similar to like draft. Uh, something like Copilot in Outlook, where you draft an email and it can um, adjust it and sort of customize it and give you prompts, and you can change the tone. And it's and is it just me, or does Copilot use way too many emojis, especially the public one? I'm, oh, I haven't seen the emoji bit. It often writes things oh. much longer than I would. Um, it definitely it it this, writes it this uh, is good. more more beautifully. What is this? Beautiful. <laughs> um, so there was um there were that there is a series of Copilot videos from uh, there was a Copilot for Microsoft 365 Tech Accelerator series. Um, so there's a number of great resources, great videos um, at this Excel Tech Accelerator page. Um, so definitely, get, if you want more information on Copilot for Microsoft 365, there's more of a deeper dive, Copilot Studio, Graph Connectors. Um, <coughs> sorry, prepare your organization for Copilot. Um, a ton of great resources and videos there to watch. So this is a training training thing, yeah, essentially. Yeah. All right. Customer oh. success kit. You got to have customer success kits. Did you work on this? No, Olga. Olga. Olga's been leading this from the CRE. So Olga is the brains, I think, behind most of the technical readiness material in here. So huge kudos to Olga. But yeah, definitely download this. Ton of resources in here from, I think, in that list there, you know, user enablement, technical readiness. One of the biggest things I got asked on some of the conferences is, you know, I've just got Copilot. I don't, you know, tell me how you use it. Tell me what's the top things that you do. How do you start your day? What things should I try? And in there, the top 10 things to try in Copilot Microsoft 365 handout. Um, those sort of days in the life of that top 10 things to try. They were like, oh, great. You know, and they, they they can kind of hit the road sort of running on their journey across all the uh, Copilot Microsoft 365 apps in there as well. Technical readiness guides are really good. User enablement, personas. Um, user onboarding toolkits, um, load of great material in there. Yeah, download it as a zip file, or you can download the items individually. But um, yeah, definitely download that. So many great resources and slides, content you can use. Um, well, the business leader guides as well, AI adoption. That was one of the top questions as well. So this is next. Did you want to go to the um, yeah, go, go to this question? Yeah, I mean, you can just hope, go to the next slide. Just look how busy it is. I, I think the first edition I could easily fit on one slide. I mean, this is just the changes from the last month of when I wrote this. It's eight, eighth of April. <laughs> so look at how much is in development um, in the middle, and then look at all the new stuff. I mean, 
all of that and then all launched there was a lot of launched items which i think maybe were catching up on maybe they hadn't changed the button to launch 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 um because there's like copart and outlook i mean that that's been there for a while um but yeah so much in development but if we just go if you i mean if you want to do it ping up the roadmap and let's let's go and have a look because i've had a ton of stuff even just this week the stuff that's been added into copilot um i mean what's this this is like i did this on the 8th of april so we're 11 days since i did this i tried multiple ways to try and make this easy to understand but um all, all i want seemed to just bring it into perspective really so is this what uh yeah that's what it. you wanted so, yeah so um go if you scroll up um take out the word copilot uh just clear clear all those filters this is how i this uh, okay I, I go to product 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 uh microsoft copilot yeah that one uh and then go to another go off the filters and then go into new or updated and then do new within last week top one and then off that so yeah so 14 have been added just this week um so some of these have previously been announced in some cases where they've just been added to the roadmap after um but there's a few a few new things there like find the perfect visual with copilot and designer in word and then if you can click in these it'll give you sort of more information copilot oh, in word integration with designer yeah so that was a common question like i kept getting asked like powerpoint i don't know if power i don't i don't think powerpoint's there with designer yet but um, I mean, using Word now integrating with Designer to find or create a banner. Um, so how often, you know, if you want to add an image into a document or you, know, you go away, go do this, copy paste, but, you know, Copilot integrating that. And June, the current rollout date for that is June. Um, designer, I think, is a is a not as well-known tool as it should be. So designer.microsoft.com is amazing. Yeah, I used it. I used it today to do some stuff for the boot camp we've got coming up. Um, I mean, it takes a bit of going. Similar thing, you know, getting the prompts right and doing that. And I think there was the designer craze where everyone created an image of themselves. Correct. Yeah, there was a, the Funko Pop. Everybody made a Funko Pop of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> At least on LinkedIn, that was about two months ago. Um, yes, yeah, so that was interesting. That caught my eye on that one. So bringing designer into in, into Microsoft three six five apps. So if you keep scrolling down, there's some new stuff. I don't know what the difference is between the number one. Yeah, and two. Say there's two of these. Yeah, I think they just put it in on yeah. accident. They put in two. Yeah, it's had your core recap. We touched on um, improved prompt it's response a nudge. copilot with graph grounding uses nudges. Use nudges to ground prompts in data sources to improve prompt responses. Do you know what a nudge is? No, me either. So let's pretend that one didn't happen. Well, well, we'll go and have a look. Well, we'll see if we can find that one. Oh, use uh, look at that draft copilot in Word based on, yeah, because draft draft at the moment based in copilot in Word based on text list or table selection. Because that rewrite with copilot, you can only select text at the moment. Oh, okay. So will it rewrite the table, or does it take the table and build a paragraph based off the well, table? I think this is, this is draft with copilot. So this is starting to write out the documents. Use drafting copilot with an open copilot with an on canvas copilot menu sets users select. I guess you can write and then select the format table list, text list or table. Um, what else we got? Oh, some more Excel stuff. Formula formula conditional formatting. Um, yeah, complex conditional format. This is where my niece is at. Behind basic top and bottom are conditional operators. That's where she has advanced. It's got advanced. She's in it. This is like a third time. They really yeah. want you to know they're adding designer to Word. I think it may be the cloud instance because we, we've got all cloud instances. Maybe there's different cloud instances with it. Um, yeah, we already saw that. Oh, you mean like, yeah, the different whatever. Yeah, I mean, these Ask are all a question word in chat. Bing search, I'll never leave the app. Isn't there Bing search integration? Or, oh, into Word. Okay. Yeah, that's bringing in the power. That's bringing in like web search into Word. Yeah, it's all Bing into Word, and then yeah. So if you if you go up to the top into the filters, you can then do changes within. Just change the that one, the 
yeah and then just do i mean you can do yeah new within last month change within last yeah but, I mean, there's Damn a ton it. of <laughs> wait again but yeah loads Pretty of stuff in development yeah so i mean heavily invested in the roadmap of copilot more and more and more coming um, I imagine I'll need a bigger boat for my <laughs> roadmap slide next time. But yeah, exciting where it's going. Yeah, there's a. Uh, it's becoming more and more useful. Um, in, internally to Jabra, we just started. A couple of us got Copilot access, so there's a lot of learning, playing around. Uh, the big, the big discussion um, yesterday involved people getting the Copilot license and not seeing Copilot in their office apps. Oh, yeah, and so it ended up. You know, it's kind of a, a troubleshooting thing, but it ends up more or less. You got the license. You now need to kick um, your account. You basically need to have your account recognize you have Copilot, and then have that flow down to the Office apps. And so the way to do that is you go to like the Word. You hit the whatever. Go down to your account settings, and there's like a yeah. refresh. Yeah. Either sign out of Office or sign back in, or mm -hmm. there's a refresh button. And as people found that and refreshed they started seeing copilot in you know in all their apps as as they expected no oh, awesome uh i think that's all it that's probably all it on yep. copilot. all right let's go with calling meeting and devices some some of the good old-fashioned stuff i say old-fashioned but you know it's not the new hotness that is copilot <laughs> Still, Copilot is referenced in some of these places. Of course, it is. <laughs> Why Copilot, would <laughs> Copilot hotness still coming into Teams? Um, should I plow through this, or yeah, here we go. Teams fun, right. Enterprise Connect 2024. I think the big thing that people are excited about is that second bullet point. Uh, maybe the first two, but the second one with nine, five nines uptime. Yeah, that's huge, and. Um... I don't think we'll have time to go through all of it. There was so much in this one. This was crazy. But there's also a new Teams phone survivability playbook. Service reliability and service... Let there was some service reliability right. playbook. And that's really good. That was just released. Um, it is available on... I've got the AKA link. Uh, but uh, aka.ms forward slash Teams Academy is listed on there. There was two new playbooks for Teams phone this week um teams uh, survivability playbook and then there was a frontline worker playbook as well for teams so both awesome um as, uh, resources i'm guessing the survivability yeah. playbook helps you on your side keep the five nine because if you have yeah. bad internet it doesn't matter if teams is up a, it's a full amount of time if a backhoe takes out your internet connection Teams phones at five nines, but you're not getting there. So that's where the yeah, the, the, the Microsoft the service, the Microsoft service side of Teams phone. Yes. That's where the five nines is added. But yeah, that was a you know that that was a requirement that was needed in some cases for customers. Um, so yeah, great to see that there. And if I remember well. my uh, stuff from back in the day, five nines means that the service will have no more than five minutes of outage every year. Wow. So five minutes in the entire year. And with any luck, that happens at 2 a.m. your local time while you're sleeping. <laughs> so it doesn't impact you. With the best. When that One happens. thing that blew my mind about like SLA times, the bullet train in Japan, it was like, uh, so in Tokyo, the bullet train, right. they, they, they have only had, I think it was like 60 seconds delay out of all their trains across the whole year. 60 second delay, not even an outage. That is, that is accuracy. I think that we have that in the UK yeah. in one train, probably <laughs> every. They, they say the German time. trains run on time. One, I can prove that no, and they don't run on that kind of Japanese time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, voice isolation, have you used this? I have not, and I don't have a lot of need for it because I work at home. I don't have a wife, kids, or dog. Yes. And I don't leave them. I mean, I have a window right here, but um, I, I generally don't open it because people don't need to hear my meetings or music as they're walking by. That's that's the that's the front. That's the I'm in a condo, so that's the walkway. So people don't need to hear that. So I don't have a lot of need for this, other than maybe when I travel in a airport lo airport lounge or something. But I think this is a killer feature for uh, maybe you or, or others who work from home. But the, say the husband and wife share the same office, or they both work out of the kitchen, and so 
when you're on a meeting talking, everybody can hear her and vice versa. Uh, even with the uh, noise cancellation running, this feature will make sure that other people don't hear, hear her at all. Yes. Yeah. You do have to enroll your voice. Um, so you have to enroll your voice. Um, you go into the Teams desktop client and you can sort of record your voice, upload it, uh, and then it basically knows who you are. Your yeah, voice. Basically, so you eliminate if, everything else. Yeah. I, I, if I hear your voice, we're locking on that and throwing everything else away. It's pretty cool. Which, which you also need to enroll your voice if you want to use what you mentioned earlier the, the intelligent um, speaker. Intelligent speaker, yeah, speaker so recognition in the rooms. Yeah, going slightly off topic, intelligent speaker, uh, the one challenge is getting end users to enroll their voice. This might make people volunteer to do it, and then boom, you've got them, you've got them hooked. Yeah, it's nice. I, I, I was on a call yesterday, and um, Spencer walked in asking the most important question you can ask of the day. Have you seen my tablet? Um, so I was presenting in a call, and yeah, voice isolation stopped him. He just walked in where he goes. But oh, yeah. a little little indicator pops up highlights in purple you know, voice isolation oh, voice isolation kicked in um the cues app there's a there's basic um auto attendance and call cues already in teams so i think this is just an uh enhancement of the power of what it can do yeah i mean, quite quite i think this is one of the top requested things where you've got people using call cues auto attendance haven't quite got the requirement for a contact center but no. They would like to see reporting. They'd like to see analytics. They'd like to be able to um, manage call queues within an app. So Queues app is here. It does does require Teams Premium available in the first half of 2024. It's available to preview. There there is a form to fill in for that. I think future settings will give uh, features like um, Whisper Join Barge. Yeah, Barge um, seems to be one that people people like. Yeah um yeah so, so that's that that was really good news to see that right, Check cool. mystery records yeah. pick to call this has been spoken out before but i think it's available now where you can oh it's for like a public website yeah public website yeah so you can have that and go into teams but it's available now yeah this has been cool call routing settings for external calls so you can have some call rules for unanswered calls for external calls this is all the phone section yes it is uh, uh, device to... ui it's better <laughs> yeah <laughs> um uh, is this the one where it says remotely managed yeah this is the one that's exciting that first one is something massive where um especially if you have um extend ex what are they called the, the expansion ports with uh, all the buttons you can then pre-populate uh, phone numbers as uh, speed dial phone numbers essentially can be pre-populated remotely as opposed to having to sign in as the user and do it that way, which was always tedious. It's like a common area phone. You would have to sign in as a common area phone account, manually add these in, sign out. Now you can just push it to multiple common area phones or whatever at once. Uh, Teams phone yeah. mobile continues to expand. It does. It does. UK two two new ones coming in twenty twenty four. New features for SBA. Um, so next quarter support for uh, call transfer, call forwarding, manager of call routing settings for call queues, auto tenants. Um, choose an alternative to redirect calls for call queues. The one was interesting at the bottom. Partnering with audio codes on survivability support for SIP gateway. Um, so this is if you have the requirement to have a local site or local branch survivability, um, you can deploy the survival branch appliance on a session border controller to have a level of survivability if you lost connection to Teams. Yeah, and this is a lot of people say, well, you know, just run multiple internet through through two yeah. different areas of your building, and if one dies, you go to the other one. Uh, not every building ha has two ingresses. As opposed to one big pipe and everything comes through. So when that pipe gets cut, everything's cut. Also, these could be for smaller uh, remote offices where you just can't afford or there isn't a second ISP option. So that's where these come in handy uh, to do to help you have your five nines side of things where, where the my team service does their side. So useful for that. Well, I already talked about that. I've jumped to um, let's see where we're at. I thought I jumped ahead. You're into meetings now, but. Um... I thought I was jumping into um, 
yeah, I guess this is meetings. I thought this was webinars and channels. Anyway, we're at meetings. Cool. <laughs> we've jumped ahead. I mean, we, we, we've got uh, like five more minutes, so I'm just kind of skipping ahead. Yeah, go through. Go through. Some of the room stuff was interesting. Definitely on. Uh, you could probably talk around. Uh, was it IntelliFrame updates, multiple cameras? Let's see. Is there? Do you have a slide for that? Yeah, should have. Or is it Teams meetings? In our, let's see. What do we have? Meet now in group chat. We saw that transcripts and chat content, live translation of caption updates and town halls. Live translation is super good. Does this require Teams Freemium? It does, probably, right? It does. The person who's managing, the person who creates the webinar or the town hall, they would need Teams Freemium anyway. So you just get more languages. You still get six, I think, with core. Um, Are you clicking through or? No, I'm kind these, of these are little ones, I think. Let's see what else do we have. What's this? Autopilot. It's there. It looks to be live. Um, I know Michelle Bowman on the uh, yeah. Team Jobs video. They awesome. put some videos out. More to come. Now this just, works. This is yeah, just for Windows Autopilot. Team Dreams on Windows. Um, this is one I see a QR code now on my uh, yeah. on one of on one of my MTRs. I saw one pop up. So. This is coming. Another quick way to join, scan the device as opposed to um, uh, God, I've completely forgotten how it is. The um, <laughs> conference room where you hear the Bluetooth beacon. Proximity join. Yes. So use this instead of proximity. It opens a companion app, I think, as well when you scan in. It, it opens what? The, uh, the, com the mobile companion experience. So oh, I, I, was able to walk in, I, I was able to come up to the Teams room, scan the code, gets me in the meeting. I could there sh share a file straight from my phone, done. Super quick. And then I could mute or mute, do all the stuff right. with my mobile. Because that was always the thing sometimes you go in there. It's like, am I going to open the mobile to do that? Yeah, automatic camera switching. Um, that was cool. There, there is a video. It's a little bit long. I don't know if we can hear audio. Did you get the audio? Do you get this audio or no? Yeah, I didn't share as. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> cut ahead. Yeah, she's going to the office. Um, so this is, this is more where, like, so they open their laptops. They open the laptop in the meeting, and the camera from the laptop gives another view. Um, so you can see the in-room camera, and then, yeah, so she's there. It's switched. So IntelliFrame is switching between that laptop camera and the room camera. Um, I think Which everyone has the best view of your face. Yeah, she goes out. I, I think the top right lady goes out of focus. Yeah, there, gone. And then it switches to the laptop camera. There you can. There's a whole story in that video of the meeting, and she needed to see the facial reaction. And I haven't played with this, but it also, yeah, here remote participants can toggle between the views. So you as a remote participant can go like, no, I want to see the whole room. I don't want to see the zoom-ins. So yeah. you can kind of be your own director at home if you want to like, oh, I'd rather see everybody or I really just want to focus. It's giving me the, the team room. I just want to view in on so-and-so, her, lap, her, her laptop feed. So yeah, so in, the top right, in the top right, there's the option to just switch between the cameras in that animation. This is what you've been doing. Yep. So we'll just kind of move along, but speaker attribution, intelligent speaker. This is all there. It's just, I think, oh, this is, yeah. So this is that all existing. I, I'm going to assume Teams Room certified. I haven't really seen that. I can't believe Microsoft would support uncertified camera uh, microphones. But essentially every microphone from any Teams Room's device, will, uh, Teams, Teams Room certified device, will now be able to do the intelligent speaker. So intelligent speaker is the ability to recognize someone's name by only their voice. So you walk into a conference room, you, you haven't signed in as anything and you start talking and the transcript goes, oh, that's Michael Tressler speaking right now. And then Martin talks and goes, that's Martin Bohm talking right now. So that works with any, uh, they'll, that they'll enable that to work with any microphone. There is still a class of certified intelligent speakers. Uh, Sennheiser, Epoz, Yalink, and Jabra all have certified ones. And Microsoft has posted that at this point, at this time, they believe the most accurate transcription will be from a certified intelligent speaker. So it depends on how often you intend to use it in a given space and how how important accuracy is. But uh, either either way, 
um, you'll be able to get this in any conference room really now, as opposed to just ones kitted out with specific hardware. Yeah. But you can do this, you can do that today with those intelligent speaker devices, can't you? Yes, that yeah, that's that's live today and it's been live yeah. for almost two years. Yeah, yeah. A long time. I'm trying to get one of those devices to to play about with it more. You know, maybe yeah. somebody could figure out how to get you a Panicast fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone yeah. from Java Europe listening? <laughs> oh, Martin L. Um, change language. This has always been a big, I, this is always kind of one of those, it surprises you. So changing languages on teams rooms, just in general, like if you want to switch it, the whole interface from English to French or something was a big pain. You had to log in as admin and then run a script reboot. Um, this way now you basically, I haven't even gone through it. You pick the languages you want to support in that conference room. And then the end users can just hit that language button and flip it to French or German or Chinese or English or whatever on the fly. Mm. All right, we're almost at the end. Is there any yeah. is there any good slide anything you really want to get to? Uh, there's there was a lot from there was a few stuff in March as well. Um I mean here's some updates blah blah. blah. <laughs> For, but, uh, yeah. Contact camera in the new app. Let's see, I'm going back one cuz I think I want one too fast frosted glass background effect got to have that i played with the uh, teams premium um uh, yeah fix up your background so th that's pretty fun that's that's yeah that's pretty cool i, use it all the time because I wish that you may, you may see in little parts of this background uh, my office is the place where everything doesn't have a have a home has a home here plus <laughs> as michael knows i have a lot of boxes and running shoe boxes in here that a lot of running shoe boxes all right, I think we'll call it here. I'll stop sharing. We've pretty much gone through all the co-pilot things, most of the highlights of uh, what's new in calling meeting and devices. So Yeah, so you can download both of those decks, uh, yep. aka.ms, what's new CMD, and then aka.ms, what's new co-pilot. So what's new co-pilot. Any, any feedback. Um, yeah, usually try and get it first week of the month. And if you're still hanging out, um, we're, we're starting to add recorded conversations to this show. So when I was in uh, Australia, I interviewed Lee Edgerton, who is the Alliance, Microsoft Alliances manager for Asia for Microsoft. And then Phil Clapham, who is a uh, integrator at Gen E in Australia. And so we get some info on, you know, we, we talk a fair amount about Surface Hub because he used to be a Surface Hub global black belt and the story of what's happening there. And then uh, also Sharon Weaver, Martin and I, Talked with Sharon Weaver about women in teams. So look for those episodes to come over the next few weeks as well. And you, uh, well, comms v next for you. Comms v next for me. Yep. Awesome. And then so comms versus in June. June, yes. Yeah, so June oh, yep. 25th. You should know. Shouldn't yeah. you know? Are you I one of the, know. are you one of the organizers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's because there's a boot camp the week before now as well. So there you go. <laughs> All right, we'll talk more about the uh, boot camp when it comes. But uh, thanks for watching, and yeah. next week will be the interview with Lee Edgerton. Oh, so awesome. keep an eye out for that. All right, goodbye, everyone. See you later.